So let's continue with the greedy algorithms playlist. Before starting off, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is job sequencing problem. Now what is the problem stating? It's stating that you will be given n number of jobs. Every job will have its job ID, its deadline, its profit. So job ID is basically the ID to recognize which job it is. What is deadline? Deadline basically means if the job ID 1 has a deadline of 4, it can be performed on day 1, day 2, day 3 or day 4. Not beyond day 4, not beyond the deadline. And a single job and a single job requires a single day. Not more than it, not less than, less than it. Got it? Now, every job has a profit associated with it. Now, your task is to make sure that you maximize the profit. Yes, you maximize the profit by performing jobs. You can perform any number of jobs. The only thing you have to keep in mind is it should be performed under a deadline. And on a single day, on a single day, you can only perform one job, not more than one jobs. For an example, there can be multiple scenarios with this given ex example. I say that, okay, on day one, I will be performing the job ID one. If I perform this, I'll gain a profit of 40. I'll gain a profit of 40. But on day two, can I perform any other jobs? Because this is done. I cannot perform job ID two because the deadline was one and that's gone. The deadline was one, and that's gone. The deadline was one, that's gone. So if I decide that the job ID 1 will be performed on day 1, I will be having a total profit of 40. Now the question is to maximize the profit. The question is to maximize the profit. So what I will be doing is, I will be like, okay, what if I perform the ID 1 on day 2? If I perform the ID 1 on day 2, I will have a profit of 40, right? And on day 1, what I can do is, I can decide that I'll be performing the ID 3 because it is giving me a profit of 40 again. So the overall profit will be 80. You can try out all other combinations. 80 is the maximum profit that you will get. So you did notice that the deadline was 1 for 3 of these jobs. And what I did was I greedily performed the job with the maximum profit. I was greedy because I want to maximize. So you're getting a vibe, you're getting a vibe, right, of the thought process. Uh, now, first thing you did see was avoid performing the jobs on earlier days. Like for the job ID 1, the deadline was 4. And if you performed it on day 1, you're blocking anyone else. So it's better to delay the job. Delay the job to the end days. Why? Because the initial days will be empty. The initial days will be empty and you can perform other jobs. You can perform other jobs whose deadline is much closer, right? So delay the job to the end days. What is the next thing you did? You want to gain maximum profit. So it's better to perform the maximum uh, profit job. It's better to perform the maximum profit job. So if I keep these two uh, things in mind, probably I'll have an algorithm, right? So let's come to this example and try to explore how can I have an algorithm. I'm looking to maximize profit. So what I've done is, if I've been given n number of jobs, I have sorted them according to the profit in the descending order. The highest profit is at the first and the lowest profit is at the last. I've sorted it according to the profit because I'm looking to maximize profit. So I'll try to do the jobs which gives you more and more at the first. Okay. Now tell me, uh, like till how many days can you perform jobs? This has a deadline of 2, 6, 6, 5, 4, 2, 4, 2. So the max, like the last day that you can perform a job will be a day 6. Not a day 7 because any job, like if you take all the job IDs, the maximum deadline you can see is 6. So you cannot perform beyond 6, beyond day number 6. Perfect. So what I know is I have six days. So what you can do is you can create a seven size seven size array so that you get the sixth index. 
ஜீரோ ஒன் டூ த்ரீ ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் அண்ட் சிக்ஸ் ஸோ டப்டான் இஸ் கிரியேட்டட் அண்ட் ஆரே கேன் கால் இட் அஸ் அண்ட் ஹேஷ் ஆரே ஒட் எவ் யூ வெஸ்ட் டூ லெட்ஸ் இனிஷியலைஸ் மைனஸ் ஒன் ஸோ வாட் இஸ் மைனஸ் ஒன் மைனஸ் ஒன் இஸ் பேசிக்கலி ஸ்டேட்டிங் தேட் ஆல் ஆஃப் தீஸ் டேஸ் ஆஸ் ஆஃப் நவ் ஆர் எம் டி ஆல் ஆஃப் தீஸ் ஆஸ் ஆல் ஆஃப் தீஸ் டேஸ் ஆஸ் ஆஃப் நவ் இஸ் எம் டி பர்ஃபெக்ட் ஸோ மேபி யூ கேன் ஹாவ் அ கவுண்ட் ஆஃப் ப்ராஃபிட் ஆஸ் வெல் அண்ட் யூ கேன் ஹாவ் அ சிம்பிள் கவுண்ட் ஆஸ் வெல் இனிஷியலி ஜீரோ இனிஷியலி ஜீரோ பர்ஃபெக்ட் லெட் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஒன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் சேங் ஐ ஹாவ் அ டெட் லைன் ஆஃப் டூ ஸோ வாட் ஐ வில் பி டூயிங் இஸ் ஐ பி ட்ரைங் டு பர்ஃபார்ம் on the end days so i'll see okay this is the deadline date which is 2 can i perform it on day 2 i'll try to perform it at the last he says yes i don't have a job so i can perform the job id 6 over here done i can perform it so done and dusted if i perform this i'll get a net profit of 80 so maybe you can add that 80 to your answer so i'll add a 80 to my answer and i'll say i performed one job for Let's go to the next one. Next one is saying my deadline is 6. So I'll go to the deadline 6. And I can perform. So I'll say, okay. ID number 3 performed. Gives me a profit of 70. Which makes a total profit of 150. And the count to be 2. Perfect. I'll go to the next one. And the deadline is 6 again. Now this is where you'll have to understand. The deadline is 6. So when you head over to 6. You see that the day is already done. So you'll try to take the other day. is day 5 possible because i can still perform it on day 5 it says yes it is so i'll take the job id 4 and i'll perform it on day 5 it gives me a profit of 65 so if you add it up if my math is correct it's 250 yeah uh, count as 3 done what is the next one job id 2 day 5 is the deadline can you do it no can you do, do it on day 4 yes so i'll be doing it on day 4 the job id 2 which gives me a profit of 60 that makes it 275 if i'm doing addition mistakes please forgive me okay turn and dust it which is the next one you see a job id 5 can it be done on deadline 4 no it's already taken so i'll do it on deadline 3 done job id 5 add a 25 so the profit is 300 now the count is 5 interesting let's go to the next one the deadline is 2 is it free the deadline 2 is not free so look at day 1 okay so day 1 is possible i'll take the day 1 and perform the job id 8 adds up at 22 so that's going to be 322 you can add it up and the count will be 6 let's go to the next one the deadline here is 4 which is interesting the deadline here is 4 so you look at 4 taken you look at 3 taken you look at 2 taken you look at 1 taken you look at 0 not taken so you perform it on day 0 so you perform the job id 1 on day 0 which is 20 that's me that makes it 342 and 7 jobs performed let's go to the next one the deadline is 2 so you go to day 2 no day 1 no day 0 no you cannot perform this job you cannot perform the last job because there are no days left and eventually you have the total count of profit you also have the total count of jobs that you can perform and this is what you'll be returning super simple i did it greedily i said okay who's giving me the maximum let's do it and uh, let's do it at the end why did i do it at the end simple example if i do it at the end the initial days will be empty the initial days will be empty and i can perform other jobs in it understood perfect what's the next thing yes write the algorithm So I'll write the algorithm. You'll be given a job array. These jobs can be a struct, can be a class, can be a pojo, can be anything. And the job uh, class struct pojo whatever will be containing an ID, will be containing a profit, will be containing a deadline. Then depending on language, you can initialize it. This is given to you. So you need to sort it. That's the first job you'll do. My pad. I'll be sorting the jobs, and I'll be sorting the array according to a comparator. In case you don't know how to write a comparator, please, please go back and watch my STL video. Over there, I explain how to write a comparator. 
super simple. What you basically do is you write a boolean. That's what a comparator returns. And you always take two variables because comparison means between two. And the type will be jobs because that is what is the type. Jobs, you can say value one and you can say jobs value two. And you're basically trying to compare, you're trying to sort it according to the largest profit. So you're saying, okay, if value one dot profit is greater than value two dot profit, which means it is in the correct so you can just return a true. Yeah. This will technically mean, so what this means is, in the array, the value 1 is ahead of value 2. Shall I keep it in the same order? Shall I keep it in the same order? And you say, if value 1's profit is greater than value 2's profit, keep it in the same order. But if you return a false, it will just change the order. That's how the comparator works on a very, very generic term. Okay, I've sorted it. What is my next job? I need to count the total profit. So maybe I can keep a total profit equal to zero. I can keep a counter equal to zero. Now I know I need one thing so that I can create the hash array, the maximum deadline, right? So what I can do is uh, maybe I can quickly iterate through, uh, I can keep a max deadline as well. Max deadline and we can probably keep it as minus one. Correct. And we can just scan through from zero to n minus one in the compare in the jobs array and I can say hey max deadline whatever it is equal to max of max deadline comma array of i deadline perfect so this will be storing the max deadline once this is done what you can do is you can define a hash of max deadline plus one and you can initialize that with minus one. You can write a for loop to initialize that with minus one. Perfect. Now what? I start iterating. Okay, so I'll start iterating right from the first job, which is at zero, and I'll go till the last job, which is at n minus one at index. For the first job, I need to see, can I perform this job or not? Can I perform this job or not? How do I see it? It's super simple. I know the deadline. So I'll start with the deadline. I can say array of i Okay, if your deadline is 6th day, let's check out the 6th day. And I can check out till the 0th day. Whichever day is empty, whichever day is empty, which means hash of that day, hash of j is equal to equal to minus 1. That means that day is empty. I can perform the job. So I can do count equal to count plus 1. At the same time, I can say hash of i. Can you store the job id, which is array of, sorry, array of j dot id. A bad array of i of id where that is a job number what apart from it i need the total profit so i can maybe see total profit is equal to plus equal to array of i dot profit so that will be counting perfect i can do a break because i don't need to find out other days simple the follow-up is done this follow-up is also done and eventually you can return the total profit because they wanted a pair so you can say return count comma Tot profit and the function ends and the function ends super simple so this function will typically be returning a pair which is the count of the total jobs and the total profit time to analyze the time complexity sorting is going to take n logarithmic of n this is going to take uh, a big o of n now this is where the problem lies this at the worst possible scenario can go up to Pico. Imagine all the deadline days being filled up. It will end up going the entire stuff. So this is max deadline. So the overall complexity will be n login plus n into max deadline. And what about the space complexity? The space complexity will be a big o of max deadline. Why big o of max deadline? Because that is the hash array that you are creating. Correct? Now in an interview, this is what they expect you because they expect you to tell them this one. But in case the interview is slightly into competitive programming, they'll ask you to optimize this inner loop. Yes, they'll ask you to optimize this inner loop. 
and this can be done with this joint set union if you apply this this one because you're looping to figure out you're looping to figure out okay which is the first day that is empty you're looping to figure out that can be replaced with dsu in bco of 1 without looping you can straight away get it so you can go head over and watch my graphs playlist i've taught the dsu concept over there understand the dsu concept and maybe you can try replacing this internal for loop with that dsu concept you can try that on your own but it will not be required in an interview so i'll not be teaching it over here so yeah that will be it for this one so i hope you have understood everything and if you've understood everything please please do consider giving us a like and if you're new to our channel do consider subscribing to us as well with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in some other video till then bye bye take care Broken